Hello Internet, this is the Stabby Brit, and this is a video inspired by various arguments taking place within the Warhammer 40,000 fan community as a result of the uh, Death Watch rumours. Now, this is not going to be about the Death Watch itself, it's more going to be about Games Workshop in general and the player base. And no, this isn't going to be a bashing Games Workshop video. It's my attempt to give my insight as to what I think is going on, and hopefully can shift some people's thinking so that maybe there'll be a bit less arguing within the uh, the 40k fanbase, indeed the Games Workshop fanbase in general. God forbid, yeah? Anyway, let's just cover the uh, topic that brought this video to life, shall we? The rumours concerning the Primaris presence in the upcoming Death Watch Codex. Essentially, the rumours state that Codex Death Watch will be very heavily Primaris focused. And some people don't like that, because uh, after all, the Grey Knights didn't have any Primaris, and uh, hopefully, in the minds of these people, the Death Watch would get the same treatment. It would just be regular Space Marines, the true Marines, if you like, getting all the glory. Uh, I watched a video by Kiroth TV, which brought this to my attention. He pointed out, it's never going to happen. Primaris Marines are here, they're here to stay, and in fact, uh, the true Marines are on the way out they will eventually just be phased out altogether. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't I don't want that to happen, certainly. I don't think it will happen, but I could certainly believe it happening uh, if Games Workshop chose to go down that route. So, this is a prime example of the issue I want to talk about, and it's the conflict, if you like, between Games Workshop and its customers. And this is a conflict that any company has, realistically. The conflict boils down to Games Workshop wants you to spend massive sums of money. And players want to get maximum return for their investment. And these two concepts are polar opposites of each other. So I'm going to give you an example uh, from back in the day back when Games Workshop had specialist games, uh, the first time round. Let's look at Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl was, and still is, an incredibly popular game. I think it's fair to say Blood Bowl survived the abandonment uh, of specialist games better than any other specialist game did. So, it was clearly a popular game, but why did Games Workshop abandon it? Well, the answer is simple, because it required very little money from the player. You bought the box game, which was about £40, and that got you the pitch, all the counters, all the, the rules, it got you a human team and an orc team, and that was all you needed. Uh, you probably wanted more than that, you probably wanted a, another team, say I got an elf team, which was about £35, because they were all metal miniatures. So that's £75, and I'm done. A except, of course, it wasn't 75 pounds it was 35 pounds because not everybody had to buy a pitch i went to a gaming club and the gaming club owned two copies of the game plus a couple of people had their own copies so i only ever had to spend 35 pounds and i was set for life as far as blood bowl is concerned in fact i've recently took that team out of uh, storage i paid a third party to paint them because i suck at painting and i've been playing in a league once again, in a, in a club where the box set and the, the pitch and everything is provided for me. So, I've got a massive investment on that. For £35, I've had years and years and years of Blood Bowl fun. However, Games Workshop has not been getting much investment from me in terms of Blood Bowl. Uh, certainly not for that team. Admittedly, I have done things like I've, I bought a Skaven team. I bought uh, a Skaven pitch, I bought some dice and all this, so that's sort of undermining my point. But the fact is, I paid £35 for that elf team years and years ago, back in like 4th edition Blood Bowl. And that was it. That's all I needed. And I can still play that now. Great investment on my part, but not for Games Workshop. So... This might give you some inkling as to why Specialist Games disappeared the first time around, and why Games Workshop has made certain choices they have with their flagship games. 
the whole reason Games Workshop felt the need to burn the Warhammer world to the ground was because it wasn't bringing in enough money. Now, that's not to say it wasn't selling at all, but the core of fantasy um, was generally made up of older models, and more importantly, older models that were bought a long time ago. Um, I've had the same thing in 40k. 40k is actually a really good example. I got into the hobby in 3rd edition, and when I dropped out in 6th edition, I was still using the same Space Marines and Imperial Guard models that I had bought in 3rd edition. In fact, uh, now that I've come back to the hobby in 8th edition, the, the core of my army was originally um, built up using the Kalth box set, but reinforced with the models I had bought in 3rd edition. So these things are still in my collection. I'm still using them, and I can still use them. And obviously, as a consumer, I want that. I want to be able to use that, that Dreadnought that I bought in 3rd edition. I want to be able to use the Rhino I bought in 3rd edition, which, by the way, was one of the first edition models. Looks awful now, but, you know, it works on the tabletop. I want to be able to keep using my products that I've bought until the end of time. However, if I have all this 3rd edition stuff, or even earlier, if I already own a 2,000-point Space Marine army that I bought years and years ago, do I really need to buy another one? It seems obvious to me that the thinking from Games Workshop's perspective uh, with Age of Sigmar was if we just burn the setting down and start a completely new setting with completely new models and completely new factions and we'll just quietly let all the old content die. We'll have, we'll have new, we'll have uh, space marines in fantasy, we'll have a whole new uh, dwarf faction We'll have, actually have a steampunk dwarf faction as well. We'll have um, sea elves. We'll have all these new factions. People will have to buy an entirely new army. Um, but obviously this met with a great deal of backlash from the community. So they were a bit more careful uh, when 40k got its overhaul. But don't be fooled. Uh, 40k has been sigmarined. The, the Primaris are there to make you buy your Space Marine army again. There's a reason that they have, they've pushed things like the Adeptus Custodes. Brand new army. You don't have Adeptus Custodes yet. You, you need to buy those because they're new. I, I think we will see... I think we will see similar things elsewhere. Uh, we didn't see it so much in some of the, the things like the Admech Codex or the Guard Codex. But rumours are we'll see it in the Orc Codex. There's rumours floating around about Prime Orcs. And this will probably be Games Workshop's strategy of bringing in new factions into 40k or changing existing factions in such a way that there are brand new units you are pushed towards buying. They want you to abandon your old collection and buy new stuff. And they feel like the only way to do that is to bring out completely new stuff and basically make everything that came before obsolete. Now, is that fair? Well, yes and no. I, I don't have a problem with new stuff coming out. I mean, I prefer the True Marines. Don't get me wrong. I mainly oppose Primaris because of the way they were introduced. I don't like their law. I think it's slapdash and heavy-handed and it reeks of anti-consumer attitude because this is that's what this is it's anti-consumer attitude it's not offering us something new in the hopes that we'll say yeah that looks cool i want that in my army it's offering us new stuff and then saying oh by the way your old stuff isn't worth owning anymore now having said all this i understand games workshop needs to make money needs to turn a profit needs to sell new stock but I honestly think that they have approached this issue the wrong way. I really do. And so these are my thoughts as to what Games Workshop could do moving forwards to strike a better balance. And I want to look first at Shadespire. Because Shadespire really has consumed my life. It's a wonderful example of Games Workshop being very smart with how they pitch a product. 
Uh, the core box set, you can pick up for about £35-40, pounds, depending on where you get it. You don't necessarily need to buy it from Gears Workshop themselves. And then you can pick up additional warbands for about £15 pounds a pop. And there's something like, is it five additional warbands? No, six, sorry. Six additional warbands. So that's about £90 pounds right there. Plus the £40 pound core game, that's about 130 quid. And I say about because, you know, you can get different prices. Uh, but also, there's ancillaries. Each, each warband has uh, card sleeves, uh, card protectors. So that's probably about five pounds each, call it. Uh, about five pounds each for faction-themed dice, and I guarantee people will pick them up. Uh, I have Skaven-themed sleeves, I have Skaven-themed dice, and I'm going to get the Magos Fiends uh, dice as well. So, you could easily drop 150, 160, maybe upwards of, what, 200? Close to 200 quid for everything? I don't know, I'm doing it off the top of my head. The point is, you can sink a decent chunk of money into this game. However, the initial investment is relatively low. £40 on a board game. That's, that's reasonable. If, if you have seen any of these, these box games, you know, whether it's, it's uh, Carcassonne or uh, Settlers of Catan or the, the uh, things like the Bloodborne board game or the Walking Dead board game, that's about the right price tag for a board game. £40. And then you can just... You can just pile expansions on, and you will want to pile expansions on. But compare that to, to 40k or fantasy. I mean, what do you get? I can't speak much for Age of Sigma, but what do you get for a £40 investment into 40k? <laughs> One unit? I mean, a, a box of Space Marines is, what, £25, give or take? So we'll, we'll, call, it, we'll call it 20 Space Marines, shall we? Call it 20 Space Marines. That's about... 300 points, if you really stretch it, three, 300 points for £40. Pounds. Well, a, an army is meant to be about 1,500 to 2,000 points, so clearly you need to invest a lot of money, and that's precisely why everyone was using the old models, because you need a lot of stuff to play 40k. And also, Games Workshop didn't update their, their model range very often, and this is, this is the other thing that I want to come back to. Because even though I already own a Space Marine army, when 8th edition rocked around, I bought a new Space Marine army. And I didn't buy it because of Primaris Space Marines. I bought it because of Betrayal at Kalf. Because I just looked at that and went, okay, that's about £90. And for that, I get 30 Tactical Marines in Mark IV armor. Oh god, yes. I get a Mark IV Chaplain. I get a Contemptor Dreadnought, and I get a Cataphracty Captain and five Cataphracty Terminators. Yes, absolutely, I love everything in this box, I want it. Those units, yes, they have their unique rules, some of them do. The, you know, the Contemptor Dreadnought has unique rules, the, the Cataphracty Terminators aren't just regular Terminators, but even if they were regular units, I would still love that box. I mean, Mark IV Space Marines don't have unique rules, I just feel them as tactical marines. But they look awesome, in my mind. They look so much better than regular Space Marines, that I want to own them. And I don't think Games Workshop gives enough credit to that. I don't think Games Workshop appreciates the extent to which people will buy things for how good it looks. And... I'm sure many people have said this, I'm sure I've said it in the past, if Games Workshop had simply released the Primaris sets and just called them Space Marines and said, these are going to be our Space Marine models from now on, would anybody really be wailing and gnashing their teeth about that? Would anyone be distraught that Games Workshop's new Space Marines for 8th edition were true scale space marines as opposed to the slightly stocky guys we've had in the past no i i really don't think anybody would there will be some people who would insist on staying with the old guard well fine but there's also people who refuse to buy primaris for the same reason so games workshop isn't winning these people over either way i realize i'm rambling somewhat so i'm going to try and wrap this up 
I think Games Workshop needs to do a little more to meet us halfway. They need to understand that their flagship titles, relatively speaking, don't give us a good return on investment. That's not to say that Games Workshop products aren't worth their money. They make some very nice sculpts, no question. However, some of their content is, is getting old now. Um, some of the, the really nice models are being discontinued. And honestly, simply, simply erasing entire ranges and entire factions in favor of the, the shiniest thing is not going to win people over. I think they need to do a lot more to say, here's the initial investment, here's, here's your initial, your £40 investment, and it's a worthwhile investment, and you can play happily with that. You can build them, you can paint them, you can, you can play satisfying games with just that £40 set. And then you can expand on that collection organically and you don't have to worry that we're going to abandon you or that we're just constantly pushing you to spend more and more and more money on the latest shiny you know, £80 night kit. And as an aside, I really do hope Games Workshop don't uh, abandon the True Marines because there's still lots of things you could do. My my first port of call would be to look at Forge World and to say, well, what if we brought out a, a breacher squad, you know, plastic breacher squad, with with the shields and the you know, bolters and other close range weapons that slot in? That would look fantastic, especially if they were smart enough to give us some. Uh, variant armors or hell you can move the storyline along and say okay well we've got we've got these primaris chapters now fine we've got primaris chapters but what about the ones that have been ignored what about chapters who are trapped in the imperium nihilists and who are struggling to survive what 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 have they turned into uh what about mark 9 power armor i would love to see what what mark 9 was because we we seem to have skipped that can can we have some mark 9 space marine squads maybe i think there's potential there i'm pretty sure if they look badass i would happily buy some and i don't know i still have some assault marines uh on the to-do list so maybe i'd buy mark 9 assault marines so yes games workshop hopefully will not be uh abandoning our most beloved model ranges hopefully they can accept that maybe we need more options to play 40k or a 40k style game at a lower points range kill team might do that uh, but obviously until we've actually got it physically in our hands we can't say uh, but just generally i really hope that rather than doing what they've done in Age of Sigmar and just trying to erase the old factions and force in brand new ones, they actually make an effort to keep the old factions, to update them, to modernize them, to finally give us uh, an 8th edition where every army has 8th edition models rather than relying on 3rd edition sculpts or even earlier like certain armies are. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe... maybe Maybe meeting us halfway will actually improve the bottom line. And, of course, we just need to accept that some people don't want to invest more than about 40 quid in a game, and that's fine too. I would would really like to see a bit more, uh, a few more Blood Bowls and a few more Shade Spires out of Games Workshop in the future. Okay, I'm, I think I'm done here. So, for anyone who made it this far... Uh, quick general update on the channel is uh my work schedule is going to be changing soon which is going to impact the amount of time i have available to make online content and uh mad jack aubrey has been digging through some stuff for me i need to invest a lot of time into reading that and preparing what will hopefully be an entertaining informative video it's just going to be a lot more work than I usually put in, because I'm incredibly lazy and a little bit restricted from time. Anyway, that's pretty much everything. Uh, thank you to everyone who made it this far. Thank you, as always, to my fans and supporters. And until next time, 
Stabby Brit, probably going back to bed. I am shattered.